And then, in my case, my husband had gone back to work, and I was 20, well, how old was I? I was in my 20s, early 20s, can't do math right now. Uh, so, I was dumb, is the point. The reason I'm trying to figure out my age is I want you to understand that I made this choice because I was dumb. So my husband has to go back to work, and I said, okay, well, I'm staying home with the baby, you're working, so I will, um, I'll just take care of everything, and you just carry on your life as per you. <laughs> and he was like, okay. Because <laughs> he was young and dumb too. And it was a Saturday morning. It was a Saturday morning, and that is important because why was he sleeping out on a Saturday morning? I don't know. But six weeks in, he wakes up, sits on the bed, stretches. Oh, he stretches little kitten arms. <laughs> and he says, I'm tired. <laughs> Picture this, okay? Picture Rach standing across the room in her moo moo, still wearing the mesh underwear because they breathe, you know? I'm holding the baby that I have just stayed up with most of the night, right? I'm holding the baby. And this, this punk, <laughs> has the audacity to say he's tired, right? Uh, it has never happened before or since, but I started laughing and crying at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys ever heard of that show, Snap? For seemingly normal people to snap and kill everybody, that was me. I was across the room and I just start talking to myself. I hand off the baby, because I can't, I will, I, not right now, I hand to the baby and he's just standing there holding the baby like, oh crap, I pushed him too far. Look at me, I put the hole, I got him, honey. And I'm across the room and I'm like, okay, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my mom's gonna, yeah, it's fine. Um, I hope. I hope you're prayed up. I hope you're prayed up because you're about to meet Jesus tonight. I got real ghetto real fast. I was like, I, you know, I'm gonna, it's fine. My mom's gonna have to raise the baby, which is a bummer because she just, you know, she's really into her new business. But I'm going to prison, so I can't raise him. And I'm about to strangle this man with the cords of my breast cup. And now she's here with her hair, this perfect hair, and I have, I'm still in sweatpants. 
joy. Not only is comparison the death of joy, comparison is the death of momentum. Any excitement you had, anything that you were doing, immediately gets squashed when you compare it to someone who you feel like is better off than you are. How many people have ever gone to go through a little internet research and lost four hours? Right? And the worst part is, none of us have enough time. Who is doing this business while also having any other responsibility in the world? Raising babies, another job, right? You don't have time to waste scrolling the internet. But here's the thing. There is something seductive about it because you get to tell yourself that you were doing work, right? You get to go spy on your Instagram feed to see how your Instagram is doing. You get to go creep on their business to find out whether or not. Look, if you want to grow your business, if you want to grow your Instagram, get to work. Get to work. Look, this is not easy, but it is simple. People will continue to reach for something. They want the magic bullet. They want the quick fix. They want the thing that makes them feel like they're doing something when in reality they're not. Stop comparing yourself to her. And the thing that I get from people is they'll be like, but wait, how am I supposed to know the new trends, or the new ideas, or what? Come on. You are not creeping on her vacation photos to see the new trends in Beachbody. Stop lying to yourself. This is, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not, it's not serving you. Because what will happen, listen to me, what will happen is that you will keep reaching outside yourself instead of doing the work on what needs to be done, and then you get to blame everybody else for why your business isn't where it should be. You get to blame everybody else, or a year from now, or two years from now, or five years from now, you're not here anymore. And you get to say all of the reasons that you're not here anymore is because you didn't have the support because you didn't know what you, you know what, but she lives in a bigger city than I live, but she has more people than she can, you know what, excuses, I can't even say that because that involves a cuss word, I'm not going to do it, you know the rest of that sentence, right, excuses are like what, everybody has one, so you can either keep making an excuse or you can change your life, those are the options in front of you today, comparison will slow you down, Here's the other thing that will slow you down. Judgment. Because when I tell people what she's doing doesn't affect you, what they hear is like, okay, so if she's succeeding, it doesn't mean that I can't succeed. That's true. But here's the flip side of this. If she's doing something that you don't like or that you don't agree with, it doesn't affect you. I am so dead set on this idea that we, as women especially, need to have more conversations about how judgmental we are to other women. Because when you are judging other women, you're ten times harder on yourself. It is not secure and confident people who judge other people. It is insecure people who are unsure about the decisions that they make. So they think that if they can assign rules to life, this is the way we dress. This is how we do our hair. This is how we raise our babies. This is how we worship. This is how we vote. They think that if they have rules that they can stick to, it will keep them safe, it will make them right. Look, this is an incredible community. And what's so rad about coming together in a community like this is that you are like-minded. You are people who want to reach more, who want to do incredible things in the world. But there is every kind of person in this room. There's every kind of religion in this room. There's every kind of voter in this room. There's every kind of um, ethnicity in this room. Everybody is here and we are better people because we are doing life with those who are not like us. I, my mom had come to town to visit me. We were driving in the car and um, I grew up, uh, my family's Southern and I don't want to make sweeping generalizations about all Southerners, so I'll just talk about my own family. Anyone Southern here? Yeah. So, in my southern family, the women are very judgmental. They love to gossip. It's like their spiritual gifting is gossiping about other people. And the best is the women in my family was like, 
leave church. They're not even in their car yet, right? And they're already talking crap. Like, did you see what she was? My family's obsessed with like her hair, her clothes, her shoes. Her, she needs a manicure. She needs to do these things. And I picked up my mom from the airport a couple months ago. I'm driving in the car, and she's very worked up because on the flight from Las Vegas to Austin, Texas, Rachel, there was a girl you would not even believe my accent popped out. Just ignore it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll be real fast. Uh, she's like, you would not even believe what this girl was wearing, Rachel. And she's like, she's been waiting, I can tell. She's been jonesing for like two and a half hours to tell someone this stuff. Well, she got to tell someone. I'm like, oh yeah, she's like, she was wearing sweatpants at the airport with a t-shirt that was two sizes too big and a flannel tied around her waist and her hair in a bunch. She's describing it. I'm like, that sounds like the coolest hip hop dancer I've ever heard of in my life, mom. Um, but she's going on and on. I just can't believe who goes out in public that way. Who would wear those clothes in front of other people? Who, how could she care so much? She's going on and on. And I said, oh, she's like, I just, you know what it is? I feel sorry for her. And I said, oh, you shouldn't feel sorry for her. You should feel jealous of her, mom. My mom and her special love was like, <gasps> she clutches her pearls. <gasps> what? I should feel jealous of her? Why? I said, because she's free, and you're trapped in a prison. The most powerful thing you could do in your entire life is to let go of what other people think about you. The most free and powerful thing, the thing that would put you light years ahead of where you are is if you stopped caring about the opinions of other people. And the reason I bring up judgment is that the ones that are most judging are often the ones who are most harsh on themselves. If you have children, this is my mission as a mother, is to give my children the lessons that allow them to just let everybody be whoever they want to be. Though the other kid is full, oh, he, he decided to paint his nails? Awesome, what color? That seems fun. Like, oh, the, that boy, he's a little bit great. That's cool. Like, if you give your children the lesson and the gift that we are all allowed to coexist on this planet together and everyone's allowed to let their own freak flag fly, right? Here's what happens. When you teach them to treat other people that way, you give that lesson to them. When we give children the gift of everybody's free to be who they are, it gives them the autonomy to believe that they were made perfectly and worthy and enough. And so what I want to challenge you today is, who's talking crap? You don't have to raise your hands. Don't have yourself that way. Who's spending your time here when you could be learning lessons, when you could be finding ways to change your life and your business? Who's spending that time instead talking about what someone else is wearing? Who, who's talking about, oh, did you hear what happened in there? Oh, but this thing, and also, God, that's gross, you guys. We are not in high school anymore. Can we stop acting like it? Small people talk about other people. Big people talk about ideas and dreams and goals and how they're going to change and how they're going to impact. And they are not worried about what anyone else is doing. Look, I don't compare myself to anybody because I'm awesome. I'm awesome. No, for real. I am spectacular. I am a great wife. I am a great mom. I love myself. I'm proud of my body. Look at this booty. It won't quit. I'm good at what I do. I have worked my butt off to get to this place in my career and to build my business to this level. But beyond that, I have worked my butt off to learn to love myself. How many people? Look, I told this story the other day on Instagram. I was at the gym in Hawaii. And in Hawaii, 
Hawaii. Come up. Is anyone from Hawaii here? Yes. Nice. Hawaiians do not play when it comes to fitness. These people have the sickest bodies I have ever seen. And there was this girl next to me at the gym and she was doing, um, what is this, a chin up? Is that a chin up, guys? Come on, you're fitness people, tell me. This? I don't know. She's doing this thing, right? She looks like G.I. Jane. <laughs> Her body is like, like Kim Jones. All the things in the arms. You know what I'm talking about, your beach body coaches. Definition, I think it's false. So I'm over here sitting down doing this business, and she gets on that bar and you me, and she starts doing chips. And I'm like, I'm listening to my Cardi B, and I'm doing it, and I'm like, look, I'm like, <laughs> And I'm, and I'm like, I gotta say something, this chick. I got, I got to say something. She looks so sick. I gotta say something. So she does all of her, all of her rounds, and then she gets, she gets up to go. And I'm like, I gotta stop her. So I say, I'm like, I'm sorry, excuse me. She takes out her AirPod, and I use that right. She's like, what? And she was just looking at her face, like, oh my gosh, this person's hitting on me. I'm like, I'm not. Uh, so I said, oh, I'm, um, that was amazing. Like the, this pull, that was amazing. I like, I can't do that. That's so cool. And she's like, what? I said, you just, you just did like a GI Jane situation. <laughs> I can't do that. I tried really hard. I still have to use the band. Like, gosh, that's so impressive. And she's like, oh, oh no. Um, I was doing like an open-handed grip, which is not as hard as a closed-handed grip. And I, I only did like five, and some people do like twelve. And I went to immediately. All the things, and I'm like, what? No! What is happening? Never, never talk badly about yourself in front of a motivational speaker. I'm like, do we need to have a, do I need to have an intervention with you in this gym right now? I was like, no! No! Literally talk to him, no! <laughs> you just did something that I can't do. You just did something that most of us can't do. Don't you dare make that don't you dare like your blood. Whatever you can do, if you can do one push-up, that's more than a lot of people can do. If you have got one person to sign up for your program, that's more than a lot of people can do. Can you give yourself some freaking credit? Knowledge 
while you're here, you're going to get so fired up with all this information, and it means jack if you don't go home and do something with what you just learned. Knowledge isn't power, because we all know people who were really smart, who never achieved anything. Who knows someone like that? Here's the other truth. Talent and success are not the same thing. We all know a lot of people who are very talented, who have never been successful at anything, true or not. Look, here's the difference. I am not the smartest person in the room. I'm not. I'm really not. I know it seems like I am, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the smartest person in the room. I'm not the most business savvy. I'm not the best writer. I'm not the best speaker. Here's the difference between me and so many other people. I will outwork you. I will outwork you. I will learn all the things that I need to know, and then I will take immediate action. If you're taking notes right now, write it down. Immediate action. If you take nothing else out of this time together, you take this. Make a decision. Commit to it. Take action. Have success. Repeat. A lot of you are going to get, oh, oh, I got so much information, and I got to see all the people and learn all the things. And six months from now, less than that now, it's going to be the new year. And you're going to have to ask yourself where you are on all those goals that you laid out at the beginning of this year. The, 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 the way that we get to where we want to go, look, maybe some of you have incredible connections. Maybe you uh, have an MBA. Maybe you came for money. Maybe you have all the resources that you need to succeed in this business that you're building. But I never had that. The only thing I had was my work ethic. And see, knowledge is power. Applied knowledge is power. But for me, knowledge is dangerous. You give me some knowledge, you better watch out. Because every single thing, if you're not familiar with my career, let me, let me give you this real quick. I have a high school diploma. I have a high school diploma and I built a multi-million dollar media business. You know, this is not, you don't have to clap the whole time. So I'm gonna say a lot of stuff and then it just makes me sound douchey. So just hold for a minute. My books uh, are in the top of the New York Times list, one of them for over a year. I've never taken a single writing class in my life. Garage of Reese sold three million copies. Girl Stop Apologizing sold a million and a half this year alone. I've never taken a writing class. I have one of the number one podcasts in business. I figured out how to do a podcast on a YouTube video. Every single thing that I know how to do, seriously listen to me, every single thing that I know how to do, I found on the internet for free. Every single thing. So, is there something right now that you know, if, if, if I knew how to do marketing better, if I knew how to do Instagram better, if I knew how to do sales better, my business would grow. Raise your hand if you know the thing that would change your business. So then tell me, wait, really 12 people are the only people who know how their business needs to grow? <laughs> so first step, know where you need to level up. Second step, once you know what it is, all my people who say that they know, why don't you have the information yet? Shout it at me. No, haven't taken action now? Now we're trying to get like teacher's pet answers. Tell me what you tell yourself. Tell me the excuse. Don't have enough time. What else? Not good enough. What else? Not smart. Too busy. Who, who, who feels like they don't have enough time or they're busy? How many? Well, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up if you've watched anything on Netflix or Amazon Prime in nice. the last six months. <laughs> Look, guys, do you want it? Or do you just want to keep saying that you want it? The first thing that you have to do is you have to know what it is going to cost to have the life you say you want. That's step number one. What is it going to cost me to have the life that I say that I want? And then you have to ask yourself a follow-up follow question, which is, what am I willing to give up 
Am I willing to give up all these things? Am I willing to pay the cost? Because maybe you look at that list and it says, well, to have the life you say you want, you're going to have to start getting up at 5 a.m. And you're going to have to work after the kids go to sleep. That's what, that's what it's going to take. And you can look at that and be like, oh, I really love sleep, though. I'm like dating in 2007. But at least then you know and you can stop BSing yourself, right? Do you want it or do you just say that you want it? Because if you want it, I swear to you, I swear, I believe with everything in me, whatever dreams and goals we set for ourselves, I believe that they can be true. I believe that they can be true. If you are willing to work hard and if you are willing to arm yourself with the knowledge that you need to get ahead, but you are never going to have the business that you say you want. You are never going to have the life that you say that you want. If you just sit here and keep hoping that it's going to happen to you. You have to make the decision. And dude, you would not be sitting in this room right now if you didn't have that, that, that voice in your heart, right? That little, that little voice in your heart that's like, maybe... Maybe I could be down front one day. What if, what if I was on stage, right? Who, who, back there in the good seats, who, who is watching these people on stage and you're like, you see that, you get motivated. You're like, that is gonna be me. Yes. Here's what's powerful. Who is sitting down here right now that was once back there and you were like, that's gonna be me. Wanting it is not enough. You have to take action. You have to do something. Dude, try anything. I guarantee that when you get home, you're going to be overwhelmed by all the things that you learned. And probably a little dehydrated, because tequila. Right? You're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be like, I don't know. Ah. And so what you will naturally do is you will pick the thing on your list that's easiest. That's easiest. But the people who are sitting down here, they didn't do the easy work, you guys. They pushed themselves into uncomfortable situations, right? They had to learn how to be a leader. They had to learn how to sell. They had to go up to people, oh my Lord, and ask them if they wanted to do business and get rejected. Oh no, not rejection. Who here is uh, not very good at asking for sales because they don't like hearing the word no? I freaking love the word no. It's my favorite word. I am so motivated by someone telling me what I can't have. Right? So what if, what if it was going to take a hundred no's a month? Or I don't know how many people you call a month. How many people you call? Oh my gosh, that thing is very headphones. Oh, sorry. Got easily distracted. <laughs> what if it was going to take a hundred no's? What if it's going to take a thousand no's? Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to do it? What if it's going to take everyone in your family judging you? Who has someone who is actively judging them for being in this room right now? Here's my favorite follow-up question. Keep your hands up. Favorite follow-up. Keep your hands up if the person who is judging you has ever been in this room. That's what I thought. Look, you guys, along the road, in the valley, from here to there, you are going to have so much opposition. Not because life is trying to keep you down, but because the universe is trying to make you tough enough for this thing that you say that you want. Because I promise you, if you cannot handle the stress of where you are, you cannot handle the success of where you want to go. You're gonna get beat up, right? People are gonna say no. People might judge you, but this isn't their dream. This is your dream. This is the thing that you decided to do for you. And if you decided to do for you, then you cannot let anybody else talk you out of it. I believe deeply that we are all given incredible potential. And if you are not careful, you will let other people speak into the exact fears that you have about yourself. Oh, but what if you waste money? 
what, what's this going to do to your kids if you leave them? You know, God forbid you should get two days away from your children to refuel, but what's this going to do to the babies? It's going to take a couple things. It's going to take unrelenting work ethic. Unrelenting. Consistency compounds. Say it to me. Consistency compounds. Meaning, you keep doing the same thing. Oh, I'm going to try something. Okay, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to ask 10 more people. And I'm going to ask 10 more people. And now I've asked 100. And now I'm going to keep going. I swear to you, it compounds. Because along the way, you get better and better and better. It takes unrelenting work ethic. And it takes you believing in yourself enough to not break this promise to yourself. You said you were going to do this. You said this is my time. And the people that are judging you, they are not the ones who will have to live with regret. You know what I hear most often from people in these industries? What they want to do with the money that all the bajillions of dollars they want to make? The number one thing I hear, I want to take my family on summer vacation. It's the number one thing I hear. I want to take my family on summer vacation. Who knows what that feels like? To watch one family and another family and another family going on vacation and you sit home again this year. The people who are judging you are not the people who are going to have to watch another family go to Hawaii again this summer when that's all you've ever wanted to do. The people who are judging you are not the ones who have to worry about where their car payment comes from. The people who are judging you don't get this and it's not for them. You have to decide right now, today, that you have potential inside you. You have God-given potential and it is there for a reason. And when you hear people talking trash, or you just think people are talking trash, you put your head down and you get back to work. Stand up. I just feel like it, that's why.